Thanks for tuning in to this short presentation as part of Bodo's Wideband Gap event. My name is Pete Losey, Senior Engineering Manager of Power Devices at United Silk and Carbide, is now Corvo. Today I'll discuss the ultra low specific on resistance of Gen 4 Silk and Carbide cast coat FETs and why this benchmark performance benefits more than just the conduction losses. We employ an innovative solution to optimize the performance of Silk and Carbide. I'll start by introducing our structure, which is called a cast coat FET. Here we combine a normally on silicon carbide JFET with a low voltage silicon MOSFET to create a highly efficient normally off switch. You can essentially think of the cascode as a source switched silicon carbide JFET. Here the inverse of the MOSFET drain source is applied across the JFET gate source node. When the MOSFET is gated off, the low voltage MOSFET drain potential rises above the JFET's pinch off voltage and the device blocks forward current. In the CAS code, we use a depletion mode JFET, which is almost fully on when VGS equals zero volts. So whenever the MOSFET is gated on with VDS well below the JFET pinch off voltage, the switch conducts current taking full advantage of the low on resistance of the high voltage silicon carbide JFET. In the third quadrant, reverse current flows regardless of the MOSFET gate voltage. Therefore, the structure has an excellent integral diode made up of the low knee voltage of the silicon body diode in series with the low on resistance of the silicon carbide JFET. When the MOS channel is turned on during reverse conduction, the forward drop is further reduced and the reverse current easily flows through the switch's low on resistance, bypassing the 0.7 volt silicon knee voltage. The JFET can be turned off with a low pinch off voltage, typically uh, 10 volts or less. And so we can use a very low on resistance, low voltage 20 or 30 volt silicon MOSFET as the control switch. So with the silicon being 10% of the total resistance or less, and essentially all of the voltage swing occurring across the silicon carbide JFET, the power dissipation of the casket FET is overwhelmingly in the silicon carbide. We've further improved this performance with our lowest on resistance Gen 4 vertical JFETs. The Gen 4 devices use a fine pitch trench structure with a further optimized drift region and reduced substrate thickness. The latest JFETs are the closest technology to the silicon carbide unipolar limit. They offer a 40 to 60% reduction in on resistance for a given active area compared to our previous industry leading 650 and 1200 volt devices. Some might wonder, well, how do you achieve a lower on resistance by series connecting two components? Well, you can see this answer by looking at the pie chart on the left the pie chart shows silk and carbide MOSFET on resistance contributions. The channel resistance may be anywhere between 40 to over 65% of the total. Uh, and this is in 650 to 1200 volt class devices. This is due to the relatively low inversion mobility at the silicon carbide silicon dioxide interface. By replacing this with the near ideal silicon MOS channel, we're able to cut this total switch resistance substantially. The conventional MOSFETs also have a body diode that turns on with a large knee voltage. And this is stemming from the silicon carbide's wide band gap. In the case of the cascode, the knee voltage of the integral diode is only 0.7 volts associated with silicon PN junctions. And the forward drop of the integral diode is a nominal, at nominal currents is typically between one to one and a half volts. Also, you'll notice from various suppliers' data sheets that silicon carbide MOSFETs have differing recommended gate drive voltages. And they often come with a limited range, either on the top side above recommended or on the negative side. The silicon MOS gate allows a full 5 volt threshold voltage, which is good for noise margin. And it's compatible with 0 to 12 or 0 to 15 volt silicon drive voltage, and has a full plus to minus 20 volt VGS range. Okay, so let's look at the on resistance of the Gen 4 FETs a little bit closer. We use the term specific on resistance to mean the on resistance for a given conduction area. In these plots, we've normalized the specific on resistance of leading silicon carbide MOSFETs to that of our Gen 4 JFETs at 25C. The first observation that can be made is that all of the switches have a positive temperature coefficient of on resistance. This is a great quality for paralleling and achieving good current sharing. The second observation is that for both voltage classes, the Gen 4 JFETs have a much lower specific on resistance across the entire useful operating temperature range. In the 650 to 750 volt space, 
one would need more than two times the conduction area to reach the on resistance of the JFET with a leading silicon carbide MOSFET, and more than 70% more area at 1200 volts. The third observation that one may make is that the silicon carbide MOSFETs continue to evolve. They're reducing their channel resistance component and making them more ideal, essentially leaving them to be dominated more by the green portions of the pie chart in the previous slide. The temperature dependence on these on resistance contributors are dependent on the bulk mobility decrease with temperature, and hence the temperature coefficient begins to resemble that of the silicon carbide JFET. Putting this all together, you can see the advantage of the cascode FETs by looking at this radar chart. We normalize each parameter so that the 750 volt Gen 4 FETs have a value of 1. In each parameter, a smaller number actually represents a superior performance. So we've talked about the conduction loss advantage and the lower integral diode forward drop that gives lower dead time losses. But as we move clockwise around this plot, we can see the other advantages that the smaller die size gives, namely a lower output capacitance and a lower energy stored in that output capacitance. So the lower RDS on times EOSS parameter represents sort of a hard switching figure of merit. And this can be thought of as a minimum energy that must be dissipated during its, each switching cycle. So now we can look at the figure of merit RDS on times COSS time related. So minimizing this parameter means that you can reduce the conduction loss while allowing a higher frequency with shorter delay time when turning off with low currents. So these features are important for optimizing performance in soft switching topologies. It's clear that the Gen 4 750 volt FETs deliver the industry's best figure of merits for the 400 volt bus applications. A similar visual can be made for 1200 volt devices that are ideal for 800 volt bus applications. Consistent with the benefits of lower specific on resistance, we again see superior RDS on times EOSS and RDS on times COSS time related figures. However, in this plot, we've also added the RDS on times QG or gate charge. This can help minimize driver losses in high frequency soft switch circuits. And these losses can be further reduced by driving the cascode FET with only 0 to 12 or even 0 to 10 volts gate drive. Finally, we also plotted the thermal resistance from junction to case for a given on resistance. One would expect to find a higher value here since we've already told you that we offer a lower on resistance for a given area and thus smaller die size. But you'll note that the Gen 4 silicon carbide FETs actually offer the lowest thermal resistance on this chart. In order to extract all the benefits of the improved RDS on times area, we've improved the thermal resistance, which maintains a good current rating despite the die shrink that affords the performance advantage we cited previously. By employing an advanced silver sinter die attach, along with further wafer thinning, we're able to improve the current rating by 30 to 48% and reduce the thermal resistance by 40 to 60% for a given die size. So despite a 47% size reduction from a selected competing device shown here, we're also able to offer a superior thermal resistance. In the example shown, the smaller die actually has a lower on resistance and a lower thermal resistance in the TU247 package. This is further illustrated in the chart on the right, where here we're showing the thermal resistance of competing 1200 volt devices when normalized to our 30 milliohm 1200 volt Gen 4 series FET. Another advantage of the lower specific on resistance, along with the superior thermal performance of the Synther die attach, is the ability to offer a very low on resistance in a smaller footprint. This can be seen with our 9 milliohm 750 volt FETs offered in a high voltage D squared pack 7 lead. One can save space, reduce parasitics, and simplify assembly while improving creepage and clearance compared to the TO247. The Corvo D2 Pack 7 lead is offered with a robust 6.7 millimeter creepage and 7.3 millimeter clearance distance, which is the best in class. And a single package design can actually be used from 650 volts all the way up to 1700 volts and above. Perhaps a less appreciated, but still very important benefit to using less active semiconductor area is reduced cosmic radiation fit. 
We performed a variety of accelerated terrestrial neutron failure rate testing on our silicon carbide JFETs and cascode FETs and found them to agree very well with previously reported silicon carbide MOSFETs and diodes. In the figure, we're plotting the measured terrestrial neutron fit per centimeter squared of active area versus the applied DC voltage when normalized by device breakdown. This was measured for our Gen 4 750 and 1200 volt FETs. One can see a comparable behavior between the JFETs and cascode FETs, as expected since the silicon MOSFET did not contribute to TCR fit. The other observation that the Gen 4 is that the Gen 4 silicon carbide FETs have a similar fit per centimeter squared of active area compared to reported MOSFETs. However, as we mentioned earlier, the two to three times smaller silicon carbide die size of the cascode FET should result in a lower cosmic radiation fit for a given on resistance compared to traditional MOSFETs. So the 750 volt 6 milliohm cascode FET, assuming 100% mission, will be near one fit for a 500 volt bus and is much less than one fit for a commonly used 400 volt bus. Meanwhile, the Gen 4 1200 volt 9 milliohm FET will see a fit of approximately two, even if assumed 800 volt bus is applied for 100% of the time. You can now take advantage of all these benefits with a variety of on resistances and packages offered at both 750 and 1200 volts. At 750 volts, we now offer standard three lead and Kelvin source connected four lead TU247s, as well as high creepage D2 pack seven lead surface mount packages. In the TU247s, we offer FETs with the industry's lowest on resistance of 6 milliohms up to 60 milliohms. And again, in the surface mount D2 pack 7 lead, we offer the lowest on resistance of 9 milliohms up to 60 milliohms. We also now offer six fourth generation FETs in 1200 volt TU247s. These come in both 3 lead and 4 lead packages. You'll find the same performance benefits in these parts which are ideal for both the front end and DC-DC stages of 800 volt, volt bus charging systems. The superior performance of Gen 4 silicon carbide cascode FETs from United Silicon Carbide are pushing new performance boundaries in many applications, including onboard and offboard charging, IT infrastructure and server power supplies, as well as industrial chargers, power supplies, and renewables.